Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Luke. And today we're going to be talking about The Breakfast Scene by William Hogarth from Marriage Ella Mode. Yes, the piece is an oil on canvas, and it's approximately 2 feet 4 inches by 3 feet. And it's part of a six-piece series that was a satire on marriage during the mid-19th century. Which is definitely an important topic in Britain. Higher class citizens would arrange marriages like business transactions and there was no regard for the actual couple whether or not they wanted to be married together. So Hogarth, who was notorious for playing on morality, definitely took this and uh, he made a great series out of it. Mm -hmm. Marriage was mostly for power and wealth, mostly status at the time. We'll go ahead and start. The piece itself was painted in 1745. Mm -hmm. So these would be seen in editorials and they would be mass printed, which is another interesting fact about Hogarth. He was one of the first uh, artists to um, enforce a sort of copyright. Mm -hmm. When people started copying his work, he took it to courts. One of the first successful people to sue over art. Mm -hmm. which, which is a small interesting fact about pretty him. Cool. I think. Starts a big thing. Definitely. Okay, so now we're going to get into some of the symbolism behind the piece and what the piece is actually about. The story goes that the wife, the Viscountess, was at, at home all day and she was just arranging a card party. And we see that the house is in complete disorder, so right. we know that there have been people here. Mm -hmm. And in the corner, um, not in the corner, I'm sorry, in... To the left of her, we see a pile of cards, implying that she wasn't, in fact, right. playing cards. Yes. Um, we also, the husband, as the story goes, was out, specifically at a brothel. Possibly at a brothel. Well, it's widely accepted it is a brothel. Right. Um, and we see that he has a syphilis patch, um, sexually transmitted disease, so we know that he got that from... Probably a brothel. Yes, because we don't see it on the wife, so we know that she doesn't right. have syphilis. And apparently his hands are tucked deeply into his money pockets, which means that they're pretty empty right now, so He's, it was a busy night for him. He spent it all. And out of his pocket, we can see a lady's cap that the wife's dog is sniffing, kind of pointing us towards it, so... More than likely, he was at a brothel last night. I think it's an interesting symbolism as well, since dogs are widely known to, to symbolize uh, loyalty, which is also great because we see throughout the series, like in the first painting, right. um, Hogarth actually has two dogs right. and chains them together. Yes, and in the last painting of the series, there are two dogs that are supposed to represent the marriage also, but the marriage ultimately fails. I think a lot of the actual items in the house... Yeah. Um, lend a lot to the painting as well. You see, um, well, I'll start on the right, the left-hand side first. We have the, um, I guess we could call him the steward. Mm -hmm. Or the servant. The caretaker. Right. Uh, handling the bills. Even his pose, I think that raising of yeah. the hand and looking up to the sky, it's almost like God. like God Almighty, mm -hmm. like sort of crying out like, oh Jesus, what are we going to do now? Because he's holding bills. And yes, he's holding a stack full of bills in his hand. And it definitely, he doesn't seem very calm about it. And no. it, with the state of the house, it definitely doesn't seem like yeah. they have much to pay for it. It doesn't look like they're going to be in this house very long. Yeah, definitely not. And as we go on, um, even the paintings in the back, I think, are another interesting yeah. touch. Okay, so here in the background, we can see from left to right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then directly to the right of that, there's a curtained over nude portrait. It was a private piece, something so. that wasn't... A little more scandalous. That we'll might represent what the t the couple kind of held in respect towards religion. They weren't very religious, I don't think. Oh, definitely not. It's more of a facade. Yeah. So now we're just starting to see that the life of this couple has become pretty chaotic very quickly, and that can be represented by the hearth directly behind the two. Mm-hmm which is completely covered in little figurines. Yeah, it's definitely really too much. Like, they're trying to cover up something. Yeah. Like, they're really trying to put up a front. Right. And behind the bust, we can see a painting of Cupid mm -hmm. over some ruins of Rome, mm -hmm. which kind of represents that the relationship is falling apart. Yeah, Cupid being a representation of love. Right. 
it's completely ruined. There is no love. Right, and if you look closely, his bow is unstrung, so there's nothing going on in this relationship. Yeah, they were not struck by Cupid's arrow. Right. And directly in front of the painting, we see that Roman bust mm -hmm. that has a broken nose. Yes. And the broken nose is meant to represent impotence, as well as the sword we see at the feet of the husband, who, even though it's sheathed, it's broken. Yeah. Which is also supposed to represent. Yeah. It. And now I kind of want to talk about something, a little bit of a conspiracy that goes on with this piece. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. All right. All right. So, the wife... Mm -hmm. Apparently, if you look closely at that shadow between her knees, All right. some people say that's not actually a shadow. Really? It's a wet spot. What? Yes, a wet spot. And a okay. wet spot that's supposed to represent that she has just copulated with her lover. Mm -hmm. And now she's looking slyly out of the frame. Yeah, she's definitely not looking at her husband. That we can't see. And she's holding up a pocket mirror. So. Oh. Maybe she's looking at her lover, and the husband, mm -hmm. the reason they think he's so bummed out mm -hmm. is that he wasn't able to perform at the brothel. So even though she stayed home, and she was successful, and he yes. went out, and he wasn't, which is a little bit ironic. And to lend to that, we have the broken sword at his feet, which is supposed to represent... Failure. You know, no, a broken sword, like, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A little, bit of a, a little bit of a pun right there. <laughs> and, um... But I, I don't believe this is true because, one, that's a weird stain. And I'm, it's, it's shadow. I mean, really, it's shadow. It, yeah. It's, it's not realistic that they're going to have her lover just hanging out right next to, you know, her husband, who's home. And that's true. That's just kind of weird. Like, he's walking around in some part of the painting we can't see. I mean, I understand that. And you could take definitely take his expression of being bummed out as tired as well after a long day at the brothel. Right. Yeah, and he has the lady's cap hanging out of his pocket. So which there's the definitely something stepping. going on. Right. And he's got the syphilis patch. And he's, you know, his pockets are empty. So I think more than likely he was pretty successful. I so. think, yeah, definitely. I do not believe in that conspiracy at all. And then the other one is that if you look at the clock in this painting very carefully, you can see that it reads 120. Mm -hmm. And 120, we don't know if that's 120 in the morning or 120 at night. Mm -hmm. And that kind of changes the context of the piece a little bit. Because if it's 1.20 in the morning, meaning at night, yes. then these two are home and together and... Having breakfast at 1 a.m. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And the servants are going crazy and it's 1 in the morning. It's just, I don't know. But if it's 1 in the afternoon, mm -hmm. that means that they've been up all night and they slept all day. And now they're just waking up. And I like to think that it's 1.20 in the afternoon because the lighting in the room behind the one they're in mm -hmm. looks more natural, like there's a window opening up on that room. More I, so than artificial candlelight. Right, light. like that, that chandelier in there definitely wouldn't be putting off that much light. Well, I, I mean, even the, you would see a light source like coming from specifically those candles, but it's sort of coming from outside of the painting, like coming in from the right. left. Right, yes. So I definitely agree. It seems like it would be an afternoon scene more so than 1 a.m. Right. But either way, it's a very inappropriate timing for exactly. a Exactly, and that just adds to kind of the sauciness of the piece. <laughs> That's very saucy. Very saucy. But it, I think that's interesting. I mean, if you look at the servants as well, the house is still... Right. Disorganized. And another reason I don't really like that conspiracy, or like, being one twenty in the morning, those servants are up at one twenty in the morning, <laughs> they'd probably be asleep, they'd be like, forget this, we, you know, clean up in the morning yeah, or something. Yeah, definitely, I think I agree with um, the scene being in the afternoon. But that's just one of the controversies about the piece, you know. Definitely, I mean, Hogarth has so much detail and so many different, um, I guess, almost subliminal messages in there. Right that you look for and you can analyze and you can interpret and uh, I think that gives people sort of the uh, almost a freedom right. to take it as they will like oh, what does this mean yeah. and what does this do mm -hmm. so um I right that's why this series is possibly my favorite because it's just so there's so much going on and it's not like even though this is Rococo, it's not, you know, there's nothing pretty about it. <laughs> yeah, I think another good, nice thing about it is that it's relevant to the time, you know? Right. This isn't something like, yeah. while using classical and biblical references, this is something that's going on in his time, what he's seeing, and I think that's just as powerful, like, hey, this is what's going on. 
Um, do we think this is right? Do we think this is not? So, um, definitely a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish we could have gone through all the paintings, but we would have been here for a really, really long Very time. Very long time.